Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Body of second brother in Martin's Vineyard tragedy found. The body of the second of two brothers from Jamaica who went missing after jumping into the water from a bridge has been found. Police said the body of Tavon Bodgin, 21, was found by a fisherman around 11.30 a.m. Thursday on the pond side of the bridge in the Marshall era, according to media reports. Tavon Bulgin was among four people, including his 26-year-old brother, Tavares Bulgin, who jumped from a so-called George Bridge on Martha's Vineyard on Sunday night. Tavares was found dead Monday morning. The other two were not hurt. The brother's parents, Reverend Keith Bulgin and his wife, Jacqueline, have jetted off to the United States to claim the bodies of their sons. The brothers were seasonal workers at a restaurant on the resort island. The bridge that links the two towns of Oak Bluff and Eggleton Town is officially the American Legion Memorial Bridge. It's common to see people jumping from the bridge even though there are signs up saying that such activity is prohibited. The investigation is ongoing and no foreplay is suspected, the district attorney's office stated. Over 1,000 new teachers to join classrooms island-wide. Education Minister Fever Williams says over 1,000 specialized teachers will be available to fill teaching positions in the new academic year. This as she most early fears about the possibility of a teacher shortage. I'm looking right now at the teachers who would be coming out and you know I see teachers coming out with specialization. There are teachers coming out with specialization out of our the Ministry of Education scholarship program. 121 teachers with specialization in maths, science, geography, visual arts are coming into the system. We have 10 new graduates specializing in mathematics and science who will be coming into the system through the BOOST program, which is the Build Out Our Science Teachers program, which is a collaboration with UWI. When I look at the figures out of our other teacher training institutions, I see that we're having almost a thousand teachers there coming out with specialization as well in mathematics with science. They're majoring in, in maths with business education, maths with computer science, double major in maths. 140 of them would double major in maths. We're seeing 111 early childhood teachers coming out. We are this year spending way more than we would have spent in prior years, some $2 billion for textbooks and workbooks at primary school level, textbooks at the high school level as well. Mm -hmm. And we are augmenting that with our e-books this year. We would have piloted it during the pandemic um, so our students would know how to access whatever e-books are provided. And this year again, we're doing it for English language. We're doing it across all grades in high schools from grade 7 to 11. All our children have email address. We will send them the link to them and send it with, you know, whatever they need to access it so that they can do that. Cops probe were the teens killing linked to Tabby Diamond murder. There were several shootings and at least six murders across the island in the last 48 hours. Police investigators are probing whether one of the murders, that of a teen, is linked to the killing of reggae star Donald Tabby Diamond Shaw earlier this year. The suspected reprisal involved a 16-year-old boy, Johnny Ellis, of Seaward Drive, a dress who was shot dead on Seaward Drive in Olympic Garden, St. Andrew, on Tuesday night. About 10.20, residents heard explosions and called the police. The teenager was found with multiple bullet wounds. Investigators recovered 17 spent casing and 11 bullet fragments at the scene. The St. Andrew South Police are probing whether he was killed in reprisal for the murder of Shaw because of an ongoing conflict between gangs from Wind Road and McKinley Crescent in the division. Senior Superintendent Kirk Cricket, head of the St. Andrew's Salt Police, said cops are looking into leads, which suggested that the deceased was associated with men from Wind Road who are suspected to be behind the murder of Tabby Diamond. At the time of Tabby Diamond's death, we suspected that his death was a result of activities of his incarcerated son, who was known to be influential in activities in the McKenna Crescent era, Ricky Stowe reporters. Tabby Diamond, 67, and another individual identified as Owen Beckford were fatally shot on March 31st when a gunman opened fire on a group outside a shop on McKenna Crescent. The Mighty Diamond singer was buried on May 20th. The bloodshed has continued across the island. On Wednesday morning, 
an unidentified body was found on Strawberry Avenue in Westmoreland. The man had defensive wound on his hands and feet. On Tuesday night, a man known as Sanjay Brown, a.k.a. Akiman, was found with gunshot wounds in Yorktown, Clarendon. A 56-year-old taxi operator was killed in Old Harbour, while the body of a 25-year-old labourer was found in Brownstone Hall in St. Catherine, North Division. Gun found five feet underground in St. Andrew. A gun believed to be buried five feet deep in the ground was seized by law enforcement during a major police military operation in St. Andrew Sound Police Division yesterday. Acting on intelligence received, the security personnel unearthed the weapon, a 9mm pistol, 45 caliber gun with 9 knife rounds and 2 magazines. The seizure was made at a residence on St. Paul's Lane of Olympic Way in the Waterhouse community. Late the evening, the officers swarmed the area and had been diligent to comb in the yard of a resident with members of the K-9 division as they believed that more guns are buried. The cops disclosed that the gun recovered had been buried five feet in the ground. We are going to find the weapons hidden wherever they are in the St. Andrew South Division, Deputy Superintendent Minto, Operators Officer for the St. Andrew South Police Division, told reporters. I want to highlight the challenge faced as law enforcement, the men in these places, the criminals are hiding weapons in some indigenous ways. We are going after them. We are utilizing technology, utilizing the K-9, and we have members of the search center that assist us from time to time, he added. Earlier this week, the police did a series of nighttime snap raids across the three police division. In one raid, the police recovered a Smith & Wesson firearm with 17 rounds on Manning Hill Road, St. Andrew, and one man was arrested in connection with this find. Another snap recovered a submachine gun on Mark Vickers Lane area in Spanish Town, and yet another weapon, a shotgun, was seized in the Swamp Lane area of Bogwalk St. Catherine. Minister of Finance of Francis St. John to have Marcus Garvey on the $100 note. Minister of Finance and Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark is once again affirming the decision to upgrade national hero Marcus Garvey from a coin to a $100 note. Minister Clark says the government is committed to the continued restoration of Marcus Garvey's place in Jamaica's past, present, and future. He was speaking at the Marcus Garvey Public Sector Graduate Scholarships Award Ceremony held at King's House. Which is why, in the redesign of Jamaica's currency, Marcus Garvey will feature as the only person who stands alone on any banknote of Jamaica. Everybody, you see all the noise about one particular note. People not paying attention to what is happening. We have made an intentional step to ensure that the legacy of Marcus Garvey is here for the present and the future so that we as a nation continue to see ourselves as a people with destiny and promise and potential that is to be realized. We are likely to give all the credit of our achievements to foreign benefactors without understanding that our own people played a significant role in achieving what we enjoy today. And when we do this, we are naturally led to be influenced that our people and our country are not capable of achieving the things which we fight for, but that we must always look elsewhere for help, for assistance, and for leadership. So in establishing the Marcus Garvey Scholarship, in as much as putting Marcus Garvey on our $100 bill, which is going to come in a few months. What we are doing intentionally is to ensure that we continue to ascribe the successes that we have had so far, ascribe the path that we've been able to climb to our own efforts. Jamaica now offering second booster doses for COVID-19 vaccine. The Minister of Health and Wellness on Wednesday issued a statement advising the vulnerable members of society to take the second dose of the COVID-19 booster shot as there has been recent confirmation of the globally dominant and highly transmissible Omicron BA4 and BA5 variants in Jamaica. The ministry advised that a second booster should be given to the healthcare workers, people over 60 years and members of the public with immunocompromising conditions. An additional booster dose will offer protection from infection and severe outcomes associated with COVID-19, particularly to members of the highest risk group, the statement said. The ministry also outlined that those who receive the Pfizer, AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson vaccine should receive a second booster for the Pfizer vaccine at least four months after receiving the first booster dose. For those who took the Sinopharm vaccine, 
they are to receive a second dose of that vaccine four months after the first booster dose. To receive the booster dose of the COVID-19 vaccines, members of the public are invited to visit any of the ministry's access points for vaccination. Individuals should take their vaccination card and government issued identification or letter from a justice of the peace the statement said. Showers expected across most parishes this weekend. A trough across Jamaica is expected to bring rain across the island over the weekend. The National Meteorological Center in its three-day forecast on Thursday says scattered showers and thunderstorms are anticipated across sections of most parishes during the afternoon into evening starting Friday when the conditions are also expected across southern parishes. It is also anticipated to be a wet Thursday afternoon with scattered showers and thunderstorms anticipated across sections of most parishes. This is expected to carry on further into the night. As of now, there are no marine warnings messages. In the meantime, the Met Office also noted that a tropical wave is approaching the Eastern Caribbean. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.